Hey everybody, welcome to My Suburban Oasis. Today we have a musical plants video for you. We are going to get some hellebores planted into this garden bed. But first we have to dig up a hosta in order to do that. And then we're going to dig up the lungwort that are in this garden bed. I have two uh, lungworts, one right here, and then I have one that is over there. And both of these will need to be moved. And the reason why I'm moving them from here is because I noticed last year that in the heat of the afternoon during the summer, they tend to get a little droopy. Now this side of the fence faces eastward, but it also gets some of the southern exposure as well. So between those two things, the lung work did get kind of floppy in the afternoon. So it wasn't at its peak performance. What we're going to do is just move those. Um, I've got a couple of spots for those all picked out and then we'll get the hellebores into the ground. So the first part of this process is to go and dig that hosta. Let's get it done. So for those of you who are new to my channel, my name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in Mid Michigan. Today we're going to start by digging up these hostas right here. These are just a variegated green and white hosta. I think they might be called Francie or something like that. I'm not even sure. It doesn't matter. I've had them in my garden for years. They're a wonderful hosta, don't get me wrong. They um, really do a great job with clumping. They bring a nice light brightness to the shade, but I they are just not my favorite. So we're going to dig these out and we're actually going to replace them with the pulmonary area right here in the corner. So to get started, I'm going to pull this lamp out. And this is just a solar light that I got at Costco. And then we're going to dig both of these up. Now, if you don't have a shovel like the one I have right now, I highly recommend it. It is not sponsored i tell people this all the time though and they're always happy when they get one they love it it's like slicing through butter you don't know what you're missing until you've got it it's called the root slayer shovel and this is the perennial version i have both the perennial version as well as um, the larger version but what i find with the larger version is it just too big for me it weighs too much it's a lot to carry around the garden so um, that's why I went ahead and got this smaller one and I love it. So what I want to show you right now is just how easy it is to divide hostas. You can see I got one off of the side there just by accident. Um, this is a nice full one. It could be divided even further if you want to. Just take a knife or the shovel and divide it in half. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'll probably put this in our garage sale um, as a fundraiser for charity. So let's get the other one out. Now, if I was going to divide this one and I wanted to leave some of it in place, I would just stick my shovel in between these two parts right here. Get that nice satisfying crunch that I'm down through the roots. And I could leave that front part in there and say I was like, oh, this is getting too close to my boxwood. And I just dig this back part out and now I have two plants and I have one that's still in the ground that will act like it was never divided in the first place. No transplant shock or anything because it's just still right where it's meant to be. Now I don't want to leave it here though so we're going to dig this out. And we're going to leave as much soil as we can right in place. Seeing lots of worm activity in this garden bed. That makes me happy. Okay, the next step is to go dig up our lungwort. All right, you can see this one's starting to bloom, which is not necessarily the ideal time to transplant. But we are going to get more rain tonight and probably tomorrow. So that does make it uh, pretty good. And I'm going to try to get as much root ball as I can here. Because these are sensitive to being moved. And when I say sensitive, I just mean they like to flop. Um, they are never happy about it. 
So don't think that your plant's dying if you move your lung wart or your pulmonary and it takes a hit because it's oak. It's gonna be okay. All right, so we have it now. Let's go get it in the ground. So the thing about pulmonary is they are pretty easy to divide. And um, I do wanna kind of spread this across this area. So I'm just gonna pull it apart with my hands and you'll see it comes off in little pieces. Because I want this to be, you know, right along the edge of this border here. And I'm just pulling it apart, making sure we get roots with it. It'll kind of naturally pull apart in certain sections. So you just kind of have to feel for it. It shouldn't be super hard to do. All right, let's get these in before the roots dry out. I'm gonna plant one over to the side over here, one to the side over here, and one in the middle right here. And then I should have a couple of leftovers to be able to take and plant on the way back hill. We're not gonna do that today though, so I'm gonna grab some pots to put them in. And one thing I'll note about these is these will be much larger in terms of their spread, um, but these are just their blooms. So when the blooms are over, you cut these back to the ground, the blooms will keep on coming up, or I'm sorry, the, the leaves will keep on coming up after you do that. Now again, these may try to like faint on me, but that's okay. Um, they will grow. They will grow back nice and vigorously. I'm not worried. And the reason I'm trying to get this done today is because, you know, I want to do this before we mulch. The reason why I want to do it before we mulch is I don't want to make a big mess. I want my mulch to look really nice and pretty. So it's just a tip to tell you that if you're getting ready to do some mulch, take some time to look around your garden and think about the things that you want to transplant or divide and transplant so that you can make the most of your mulch and <laughs> just use it once if you can. Okay, this one is a little bit larger. I have to move this hoop here. The thing about these roots is that they're mostly like more surface and not super deep, so they're fairly easy to dig up. This is also pretty good soil over here. I've been amending it for years with mulch and, and leaves in the fall. So that definitely helps in addition to the fact that it's rained recently. That's a really, really nice clump of lungwort right there. We're gonna take it right over here. So this is a really nice big clump of pulmonary and I could divide it by hand but I also want to show you how to divide it with a shovel because I just want two pieces. I don't want to try to separate it out. So I'm just going to cut right down the middle and this is probably going to, you know, kill off a few of the leaves but not a lot. So ultimately now I have two really nice plants right here. And I could divide it a lot further if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I just want to get it in the ground right here because I kind of had a hole. Uh, my my uh, hydrangea that's over here was definitely covering up this spot and shading it.
The nice things about these lung warts is once they are established, they really don't need a lot of water. So they're a perfect companion to these arborvitas that like to suck up the water in the soil. You can see they really don't have much of a root ball in here. All right, we have Anna's red hellebore right here. So that is what we are going to replace the lungworts with. And I think the coloring of them goes really well with the plum tree leaves, and it goes really well with the burgundy ajuga that's in here, and it goes really well with the barberries that are in front as well. So I'm just really excited about having some additional evergreen interest in this garden bed besides just the arborvita. Something that's a little bit closer to the front is gonna be great. Now hellebores are very animal resistant as well and this tends to be a spot where the bunnies come through and they like to um, dig under the fence to get over to the neighbors and so it's kind of a part where they like to hang out so it's really important to have things in here that they don't like. In fact I've even been told or I've even read I guess I should say when looking at things that are deer resistant, that if you plant things that are like hellebores and you plant them near other plants that are not deer resistant, deer resistant, that they actually will avoid some of the other plants that are around them. So this is really exciting. I just wanna show you guys what's happening with the root structure here. After I bought these and planted them, you can see these little white roots. These are all new roots that are starting to poke out and grow for this plant. I'm just gonna use some of the compost that's in here and mix it in with some of the native soil. You would not do this for a tree or a shrub. You would just plant directly into the native soil. But for a hellebore, it's absolutely fine. Now I also want to make sure that I plant these at or just above the ground level because hellebores do not like to be sitting with wet feet. So if you've struggled with hellebores, that might be part of it. All right, that one's in. Again, this is Anna's red hellebore, and this is hardy in zones five to nine, I believe. Yep, nine. All right, the other one is gonna go over here, so let's get that one going. Hellebores, once they get established, can be really, really drought resistant, you guys. And I don't know if you can hear, but I'm hitting lots of roots in here because of the trees. Um, but these are a great way to fill areas with dry shade. They do need watering until they get established. So don't forget to keep up with the watering until, until they look happy in their spot. But it shouldn't take long. Now this faces east, so these will get nice morning sun, which they will love. Uh, this type of hellebore, which is mixed with many different varieties, it's quite the hybrid. Um, it likes a little bit more sun than some of the other ones that are like self-seeders and such. So um, this is a perfect spot for them. I happened to have a stem break off while I was transplanting and so I'm going to actually put this indoors in some water and it will last quite a while because this is after the blooms have been pollinated and so they are you know going to last a lot longer. You can't really take cuttings uh, for flowers of the hellebores until they really firm up a bit. You don't want to do it right when they freshly come out. All right, well, these are just kind of tucked in and it does make for a really nice natural woodland garden look. But you can see how the reds just kind of blend the burgundy between the Anna's red and this barberry. And then we have the complementary ajuga. 
and all of them have a different leaf structure so they play really well with each other and also don't blend too much and it's a nice little contrast between the yellow of the daffodils and the reds of the hellebores and I'm not usually a fan of like bright colors or like the yellow and red on the color wheel but early in the springtime like this it's some of my favorite things to see because they just light up the garden and for me after a dull gray winter that's what I need so I'm really pleased with the way that these look in the garden and hopefully they'll continue to bulk up over the years all right, let's get on to our next project with the soapwort. All right, the plant we're going to take a look at now is this soapwort right here. This has really pretty white, light pink blooms on it in the summertime, and it's a really hardy, hardy plant. This is one that I actually took um, from one of uh, uh, the ditches that we had up in um, Wisconsin and brought it home with me. So um, what I'm going to do for this one, it is a a spreading plant and what I'm going to do with this one is just what I showed you with the hosses which is to put my shovel right in the middle and uh, dig some out and then we're going to plant it in the way back and again I may damage some of the plant with this but it's no big deal this plant is really tough and you can see it's already sending out some additional shoots right now this one is a shoot right here these are shoots right here and I'm just going to be trying to keep this in a clump in this garden uh, if you you know don't want something that spreads this would not be a good plant but because we have kind of a little bit more of a wild area in the way back I'm actually hoping that this will really spread quite well back there so let's get this planted in the way back Well, the deer don't really seem to care that we're here. Um, you know, they're kind of like interested in us, but they're not really that scared of us. Hopefully they'll run away. There we go. All right, so that's the deer herd that comes back in through here. Well, that's why I don't plant, you know, any fancy plants back here like hydrangeas or anything. So yeah, let's uh, get this soapwort planted and we'll leave them to their business. So this is an area where we have really horrible soil. I suspect that this is the soil that was dug out of the pool and then chucked over the back hillside here. And so it's super heavy clay and it's just really gross. Um, in this garden bed right now, I have some white wood asters that have seeded themselves. We have some daffodils. I have some sedum. I've got some uh, catmint and I also have some ansonia in here that's not up yet along with some chives so all of those things uh, that are back here are deer resistant if not deer you know pretty pretty deer proof at least for my deer and I'm hoping that this one this plant will be too so this will be my test plant to see how well this does in the soil as well as to see um, how the deer handle it so we're just going to tuck this in right at the top. And that's it. Okay, so here we are in one of my front long sun borders. This actually is on the north side of the sun border. So it gets a little bit of shade from this blue muffin viburnum after it leaves out. What we have planted right in front of me is the Scalawag holly. And this Scalawag holly comes from Monrovia and I planted this last year. This should get about three to four feet tall and wide but the deer really seem to like this plant a lot, unfortunately. So I'm gonna take it out from here and we're going to put it in the back garden in a sunny spot. And we're gonna replace this with a boxwood because I really do like having the kind of weight of an evergreen structure at the end of this garden bed. But we're gonna put the boxwood a little bit closer to the rock, I think. So let's dig this out and we'll get the boxwood planted. My guess is that this isn't very well rooted in, uh, but we'll see because I just planted this last fall. Yep, it's coming out nice and easy. Now, this is a perfect example of, um, you know, transplanting in a garden bed where I already did the mulch. 
So um, luckily we still have plenty of mulch right over here by this area. So it shouldn't be a big deal to be able to top it off. All right, let's get this boxwood out. This is a Green Mountain boxwood. And Green Mountain boxwood can get fairly tall. They can get fairly wide as well. Uh, but my goal with this is just to continue to trim it. I'll probably let it get about the same size as the boxwood balls that are around my front lamp post, if you know what those look like. Um, they're probably about two and a half by two and a half feet wide each. And that I think will fill this out really nicely as these viburnums get just a little bit taller. Now the viburnums have been in this bed for, oh, I want to say, let me think. I think this is going on their fourth year now. They do have buds on them, so I'm very excited about that. I'm trying to decide whether I need to plant this down a little bit deeper than the other was, and I think I'm going to. Now this bed was created solely with arborist mulch placed about six to eight inches on top of the ground directly and it has done really really well i just planted directly into it the next spring and didn't have any problems and i know a lot of people are concerned about planting into wood chips or wood chips taking the nitrogen out of your soil um, or robbing the plants of that. I didn't have any issues with that really. And I would also just say that um, I did add a little bit of, you know, organic fertilizer, but that's about it. I think I do want to raise it back up just a skosh. I do want to cover up this root ball. If you can see, it's got lots of roots at the top that are sticking out. So I do want to make sure I get the mulch from that, but I don't want to bury it any deeper than level and I want to make sure that it lines up with the middle of the row and the rock and I think that looks pretty good so now we'll just backfill with the same soil that I dug out And no, I'm not using any fertilizer as I plant this. I don't really think that I need to. And I may not even need to put much mulch back over in here either because it seems like we have just enough to cover it. All right, let's take a look at how that looks. And yes, excuse our tarp with our mulch and all of that back there, but that pretty much um, makes a really nice picture from the end. And then you can see it's lined up and actually spaced quite nicely with the other two boxwoods that I have in here. And it is the same kind that I used for those. So soon I will, I'm gonna let this you know, grow on a little bit. You can see it's got a lot of fresh growth on it right now. So I'm gonna let that grow on for a little bit and then I will come through and trim it up to make it look like a nice little ball. And I know not everybody likes little balls, but I happen to love my boxwood balls in my garden. I think they just bring a really nice evergreen plant and presence to the garden. And we don't have a lot of evergreens that have green leafy foliage here in our zone. so. It is something that is just really great to have in the garden. It also really helps provide a nice backdrop and setting for all of the other plants to kind of show off. All right, let me show you where I'm going to plant the holly. We're not going to plant it today, but let's go take a look. Well, you guys, here we are in the back garden and this area is fenced off. So the deer do not come in here. I think some of it is because of the fact that the fence on the back hill has enough of a slope where they don't really feel comfortable jumping into the garden. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Otherwise, I would have all sorts of problems everywhere. But um, 
This Arborvita shrub has been in here for years. It started off as just a ball. Um, I tried to kind of topiary it to see if I would like it better, but it's super boring to me. It doesn't look great or healthy, and I want to replace it with another um, evergreen plant. So I think this is going to be a really good place for the holly. It gets full sun. This fence is um, on the east side, so it faces west, so it gets sun from both the south and the west, and it's just wide open to it and Holly's love sun. So I think it's gonna be a lot happier back here. I don't know for sure. That's what gardening's all about is you try things in different places and see how they perform for you. So I'm not gonna do that today because it's gonna require me, you know, taking a whole bunch of loppers to this, digging it out and putting the Holly in. But hopefully I'll have it done before our next garden tour so I can show you what it looks like. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. It's been great being outside. Uh, we definitely have some soggy ground because we've been getting so much rain and we have even more in the forecast. But hopefully all of you are getting an opportunity to get out in your gardens and enjoy them. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.